So as an angler who loves fishing for the strong, sizable, and plentiful fish we call the common carp, among many other names and variants we have in the US, I had made it a mission this past year to catch and eat a common carp. Now to some of you who also love carp angling, you may be wondering why I'm tipping my toes into the dark side of killing carp. And for everyone else in the US, you may be thinking, carp, yuck, Ugh. who eats carp? So on one hand, I do love fishing for carp. They're just fun to fish for. And if you haven't fished for them via hook and line, you're missing out. I mean, seriously, I honestly think half of the bass fishing fanatics out there right now would become hardcore carp anglers if they just give it a try. But that's a discussion for another time. But on the other hand, carp are just everywhere. And working in the conservation space, I can understand that there are quick growing fish that can grow out of its range of being targeted by other native fish in the area. And once they're past that size in like two years time they're kind of just there to stay unless someone catches them and eats them or uses them by some other means <coughs> fertilizer so that's really what this video is about tired of seeing and hearing about ditches filled with piles of rotting carp I set out to see if they're any good to eat and if they happen to be so plant that little thought bubble in your noggin every time you see or hear about someone leaving carp out to rot because they may just be wasting good amounts of food which really isn't something to brag about so this past year I set out to catch a carp to eat in Kansas City with the bare essential I think someone may want when targeting some carp. Plus a few fancy doodads in case you want to spoil yourself. And I have to say, I think it went pretty well. Yep. Good deal. Ooh. Ooh, what do we got? He is a super small carp. Gosh. He's lively, isn't he? First fish. Not super big by any means. It does look like he's probably at the end of two years or so. Two and a half, maybe. At eight inches a year, you'd think. I do think that we might throw him back and just hope that we get a larger one. But good start all the same. Goodbye, fish. It was fun having you. Thanks for making sure we didn't catch nothing this time around. There he goes. He's figured it out. Very cool. Fun to watch him just swim away. So what is in the backpack of essentials, you may ask? Well, I've got two uh, stakes with alarms on them, just so that makes it a little bit easier to do. These alarms, honestly, you can get a three pack for like 50 bucks starter alarms on Amazon. So if you want something nice, I mean, you can have a remote that goes with them. I'm not sure where that is. It's in here somewhere, but you can uh, literally go 30 yards or something away and just, you know, alarms will go off and you'll be able to know. You might think it's too techy. Maybe you just want to sit there with it the entire time, but it's much more fun to relax and know that when there's a fish on, you can just go get it. Towel for any sort of dirtiness. And then I've got some other random necessities in here. Turn them down a little bit, don't want them super loud. My good friend Jason from the Kansas City Carp Group actually uh, created these and uh, gave them to me <laughs> in the tournament where I did really bad, so that was really nice of him. Thank you, Jason. You may be thinking to yourself, is Bo gonna change up his classic bait? No siree. Though I will say, I haven't made it this small of a batch in a while, so I hope it's not too bad. We're just gonna find out, I guess. And a method lead. I haven't fished with these for a while, but they are great for getting into carp fishing. Well, method leads make it pretty easy. You can buy a pack of eight of them for like $16, which isn't too bad. It's a sinker and it holds your bait on really nice. So can't recommend them enough if you're starting out wanting to uh, get started in carp fishing. Yes, sir. Activate the secondary drag. Put it in our rod holder here. Pretty darn perfect. All right, well, I have my rods exactly where I wanted them. So if I don't catch anything, it's completely my fault. Well, we've been here for a little bit since that first fish. Um, you never know when stuff like this, they are kind of spooky. They could have, you know, saw the action going on and... 
Ooh, 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 ooh. Or, you know, they're just, you know, being patient, and now they're finally taking it. Oh! What in the world just happened? When we get to that line, I don't know if we can. We got the line. Is it still connected? Is the question. And if it is, are we prepared to fight a carp with my hands? Oh yeah, he's on there. Don't want it to get around my fingers at all. I'd rather it be around my entire hand. Get it around our arm. That way, we, if it is a big fish, it doesn't slice off one of our fingers. Yeah, it's another little guy. Look at that. Reeled in with my hands, bro. There he goes. There he goes, trying to run off. This entire time, he's just been, just been messing around. Ah, oh, you crazy thing. There. I'm just curious why the uh, why the line broke. All right, you. Oh. Yeah. Well, how about that? Hand lining a carp. I mean, it's nice to actually get another fish because I was worried we weren't going to catch another one after letting that first one go. But at the same time, I think two is a sign that we better just table what we can get today. I got my tackle back, which is nice. And I have the line over here so that I can pack that away and not trash it. Tell you what though, guys, this drives me insane. If you have line come off your reel, don't throw it on the ground. Why would you do that to your own fishing area? Okay. Just got some light drag. Yep, this guy's pretty small. I think we might just have to let him go. Got some dogs. Some dogs joining us. Good deal. You know, crazy thing is, I kept thinking he was super small this entire time that I was uh, bringing him in. But then I finally get him in here and I think he's pretty much the same size as the other one we already caught. There we go. Little guy. It's crazy because when I came out here, I kept thinking to myself, I'm just going to catch big fish the entire time and I'm going to feel too bad and I'm just going to let them all go. Um, I'll never catch a smaller one that I think, uh, yeah, I could eat this guy. Um, but we've caught two of these fish, three of them actually, all this size. They must be fairly new because I've never caught, I feel like I've never caught carp this small in this creek before. So I think I don't have very much bait left, but I was, I was feeling bad calling it quits early. Um, I think we might get this guy ready as well. And then, um, then we'll have two fish for the day, which will be a little bit more food to eat. <laughs> Hopefully we even like it, uh, but it's worth a try. Made fancy water today, boys. We're, we're getting all ritzy up in here. We got cucumber and lemon. Got to run. Ooh, there's a splash at the top. Now this is one of my regular carp rods. I go under or over? Oh, okay. Don't tell me he wrapped around it. Don't. Oh, and he spit it. All right. Well, is this our fifth one of the day? Not been a bad day, but I feel like they're all fairly small. The reason they're uh, going for it. I think he's just a tad bit bigger than the ones we've been catching. Just a tad, just a few pounds. Finally tuckered out there, tiger. Top notch. Now this fish, if we had caught this one to begin with, I probably would have been okay with just keeping him. And then we would have just thrown back all the smaller ones. I feel like that would have been enough to feed all of us, honestly. 
Um, if he was any bigger than this, I think I would have thrown him back. If he was any smaller than this, well, we ended up keeping the two smaller ones. But, uh, but yeah, if we had caught this guy to start out with, I probably would have gone with him. But I was getting a little impatient after catching the second one of that same size, that same small size. We almost got a third one, but he got off the hook. Um, seems like there's a lot of the smaller fish in here. Pretty cool, though. Um, pretty cool to catch a fish like this. I mean, it's always fun to catch a fish of this size, and he did put up a good fight on that uh, lighter weight rod. But I think we'll uh, go ahead, get him back in the water so that he can get a little bit bigger. You, you lucked out today, bud. We got two other fish that we're keeping instead. But uh, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a perfect, uh, I, I could be wrong, but I think it, it looks like a perfect eater fish to me. I think that could have fed a family fairly easily. But today he's gonna swim back off. Very cool. Well, we, uh, we're out of bait, so we're just gonna be waiting for this rod. I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes or so just to see if anything happens. Um, that last fish was great. I, I could definitely end on him, so uh, I'm not too hurt if I don't catch anything, but we do have our, for, our two fish down here uh, that we're gonna be taking home and uh, cleaning up. I do know, and then before any of you comment about it, I do know on, on good authority from uh, one of my neighbors nearby who is, uh, is from the, the motherland of Germany, um, who, who told me that the best way of eating carp is to keep them alive in a, uh, in a bathtub until you're ready to eat them. But today, I cannot do that. I have no bathtub. Um, I'm gonna take them home and fry them up immediately. So. We're just gonna keep them here, ready to go, so I can take them home, uh, cut them up. I know a lot of people have asked uh, or said this in the past that you know the carp can sometimes taste muddy or sometimes you know taste like the water that they're in. But you know I'm from Kansas. Come on, have you seen our rivers? If you're not stepping into a foot of mud when you get near the bank, then you're just in a weird spot, I guess, because that's just how it is. So I honestly am looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to cutting these guys up. Um, and trying them out. I feel kind of strange uh, being a big carp fishing guy but never actually eating one. Um, so I feel like we need to do that if we can, you know, turn that whole description of them being a trash fish around to back into the eating fish that we used to do for the past hundred years until they became this trash fish, then uh, I think that's really important for our ecosystem and, and uh, helping out with the overpopulation of carp and just making it healthier. Um, an ecosystem with the carp in it so I think as an avid carp angler that's important to me um, being able to eat these fish and being able to differentiate you know what this is an eater carp versus this is you know a trophy carp that's going to get bigger um, I think that's important to me and I'm excited to uh, to push that message along so we'll pack up and start cooking everybody back at the homestead now just in case you thought I was all talk and no walk. But here comes trouble. I was just cleaning these guys off, giving them a little bit of a rip. And I was needing to clean this mat anyway. So, two birds with one stone. And it's taking the scales off. Okay. Woo. Hey, quit it. We're trying to do a video here. So I only have a fillet knife, but I have a feeling. Let's see if we can go through. Ooh, here. I know there's scales there, but I was hoping we might be able to find a spot in between. There we go. Just like so. And if done very carefully, might be able to just take that, take it all the way to the tail. That's my hope anyway. That we won't even have to take any of the scales off. And we've reached the end of the tail there. Good deal. Now, try to take it up to here. There we go. If we can manage it, we'll just cut right into there like we did. And that worked out pretty well. Not as hard as I thought it would be, but this this one up at the top near the dorsal fin, I feel like that's gonna be a different story. I know that they have good ribs. I've heard that. I've heard that they have good ribs in here. Um, in fact, uh, there's like actually like recipes for carp ribs that I've seen, but I'm not interested in that today. Oh, 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 oh. Be careful there, Bill. Well, I mean, it's getting through the scales. All I want to do is separate this just enough so that we don't have to take out the scales and 
we can start skinning it like any old fish. There's a couple things you always hear about carp. One is all the bones. There's lots of bones in it. Ooh. And all the scales make it a pain to, to, uh, to clean. So if we can negate those two things, I feel, I feel like we'll be pretty, pretty golden. And here you can see, just like any old fish, I'm just slicing away at the top against the ribs here. So coming along, everybody. Look at that, top notch. I am hopeful that we can do one of these maneuvers. Boy, we almost had it right at the end there. We started getting some of those scales at the top. But otherwise, I feel like we did a fairly good job. Yeah, you smell the fish, don't you? Bjorn says it smells good. He did it. You love fish, don't you? We always give him the uh, salmon skins whenever we cook up salmon. Okay, top notch. Well, I'll give this another clean when I get inside. But I think that is our first filet there. It's, a, it's incredible. Very good amount of meat at the uh, tail end and then around the top um, around here quite a bit of meat and then as it gets into the ribs that's when you start uh, losing a lot of the meat and you can see a lot of the meat in the ribs here um, which is probably why a lot of you know some people will end up cooking them with the ribs as part of it and just eat around the ribs and as you get into a bigger carp I mean you have to remember this thing's like three pounds get into a you know 10 12 pound carp, these ribs get quite a bit bigger, easier to eat around. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and put that, kind of like I do with catfish, kind of a milk, water, uh, salty combination there, and uh, get these other fillets done. All right, cool. Well, here we are again. I was really hoping the dishwasher would be done by now, but it's not, so just don't comment about that. But here we go, we got our uh, carp. It's in a bag here. We've had it in this brine of salt, water, milk. Am I going to be able to get this with one hand? Bjorn, come on, help me out, buddy. I can't, I can't get this open. There we go. There we go. Um, it's been sitting in here overnight. It's time to take this out, put it on to here, dry it out. And, uh, well, I'll get to part two when we, uh, finish that, I guess. Yeah. Pretty impressive how much meat you get. Otherwise, you know, whether it's edible, that's going to be you know, the biggest thing, uh, whether we're gonna be able to eat it without a lot of crunching through bones. Um, and to do that, to fix that up, go ahead and do a method uh, called scoring. So we're gonna go ahead and go through this. I'm sure if you've looked up other videos of, uh, you know, cooking, uh, doing stuff with carp, uh, this is, you know, something they did and it's something that we're going to do too. We're gonna go ahead, score through all of this. Uh, you have to go down fairly deep, I hear, uh, to the point where you kind of hear the bones cracking. And, uh, and then we're going to go down through the entire, poor, poor, you know, filet. I can hear the bones cracking too. I'm just hopeful that I don't pick this up and it just falls into a bazillion pieces. But, you know, I've never had fish fries. <laughs> and that would be pretty interesting. Scoring all the way through. Is it all one piece still? I think it is. So uh, yeah, then we'll cut this into bite-sized pieces, or at least, you know, nice little portions, at least, and uh, get it ready to throw into the fryer. All right, we got these ones all made out and those ones up there. Now it is time to fill up our pot with some oil here. Now it's time to do some beer battering, everybody. So when it comes to the beer batter here, um, you have some options. You can use a ginger beer if you're, uh, you know, someone who likes to have a uh, Moscow mule or... Anyway, if you have ginger beer around, you can certainly use that or a regular old wheat beer or uh, another type of beer. Feel free to do that. Though I say the, the only rule about that is if you do a regular beer, um, you have two of them. One to use, one to drink, obviously. The package, if you look at the package, it does recommend using one cup of beer, um, but I don't ever do that. Uh, I did it once, it didn't work out as well. So after that, I just kind of started, I throw a little bit in there, you know, start mixing it up. You'll find out that it's like a really thick paste, like dough, and then you add a little bit more. And before long, it becomes the perfect substance. Obviously there's not enough in here. So you add some more. 
And you mix it up a little bit more. Look at this, it's become a baking show, basically. Look at us all baking together. Just a bunch of manly men baking. This is fun. Guess we're not really baking, we're frying, but there's, there's dough involved, so it feels like baking. You know what? We could all make a manly fishing cake later. How about that? But you know, I prefer it a little runny than a little thick. So there we go. To a perfect amount so that it'll stick to whatever it's on, but you get a lot of runoff so that's not too crazy. And this will thicken up in a little bit too. So I think it's perfect, just about perfect. And we pretty much use almost the entire bottle. So one cup, I don't know. Now, something I didn't tell you is that I also decided to throw in a little bit of a crazy thing and to mess with the judges to make them, you know, not aware if they're eating carp or something else. I did go out to the store, bought some tilapia, also bought some catfish. And so they'll be able to try carp, catfish and tilapia which they've had catfish and tilapia before, but it will be interesting to see if they'll be able to tell the difference of the three fish. This is gonna be tilapia. They're kind of in fish finger shaped. This is the catfish. It's in regular, you know, if you order, you know, fish and chips or something like that in the United States, this is kind of how it looks, you know, that shape. And then the carp over here are more in like kind of squares, kind of chunks, I guess. Try to separate them as well, just to make it less confusing. All right, and despite it being so high in the beginning, it is now perfectly at 350, which is pretty crazy, but I think the catfish is done. It might look a little dark to you, but it's actually a perfect golden brown, so I think we're gonna take it out. One, two, three. Don't touch me. And four. And I've also got two other plates so that we can keep them separate, but I'll be the only one that knows which fish it is. All right. Moment of judgment. Brother is here, ready to try this. What do we got? Okay, we got fish, three different types of fish. Not telling you which is which. Here, they're cut different ways so that I remember which one is which, but it's up to you to try each of them out and tell us what you think. <laughs> kind of nervous. <laughs> oh, nice. If I had to guess, I would say that this is carp. Okay, yum yum. No malt vinegar or anything? No. Raw dog right it. for it. What do you think? Describe what your feelings are right now. I mean, like the usual fish you make, it's got a great batter taste. If you guys have ever tried Long John Silver's before, but my brother was wonderful at making the batter on fried fish. As it sits in my mouth a little bit, I can start to taste the fishy taste of it. I don't think there was much of a fish taste in that piece, but I would give that one a out of 10, I guess. If I put like a walleye or a cod at the top or something. Mm. Where would you put it? You know, I'm, I'm kind of craving catfish nuggets right now. Fried catfish nuggets. Okay. And if the if I were comparing it to catfish nuggets, I'd say it was a little bit below catfish nuggets. Oh, okay. But close, but close. All right. A little bit more fishy than catfish nuggets. Oh, okay. Second one. Second one. This one's a little bit warmer. It's got a softer crust on it. I'm just gonna take a bite out of it. Okay. Mm. I like this one. You like that one? This one's got a much softer white meat. As far as flavor, it's not real muddy, but it's not clean. Like a, like an ocean fish. It's kind of right in the middle. I think I just tasted a little bit of a bone. So I'm wondering if this one is the carp. <laughs> Yeah, got white meat. Yeah, so I guess I just fried that one better. That one's really good. I did the same. Another two different fish. Is this that same? Yes. Okay. So last one. Last one. This one kind of looks like a, a baseball mitt or something. Uh-huh. Like I'm gonna break it. Yeah, feel free. Into pieces. Now, I'm gonna peel this dark meat because you don't think you'll like the dark meat? Uh, I, I don't know, I'd rather just eat the white meat. Okay. So this one's got a little bit of a, a dark meat to it and the white meat. Man, there's three different types of fish here, but I don't think I've ever seen a dark meat on like <laughs> a, a fish like that, unless it's tuna or something like that. I, I don't really know what fish looks like after we cut it up. So, you know, looking back on the three fish, this one I think is carp. Okay. What are you thinking, taste-wise, experience-wise? 
This one's my favorite. Really? Mm -hmm. Honestly? Why is it your favorite? Because it's got no fishy taste to it whatsoever. Really? Is this the cart? It is the cart. No way. <laughs> I swear to God, I tried it before this and I, t and I walked into the room and I go, okay, so I'm not gonna tell you which is which, but I did eat it and I have to say, flavor is 10 out of 10. I, I'm not kidding you. I'm not saying this because I want it to be good. It is honestly, honest to God, pretty good tasting fish. I haven't heard any positive things about eating carp. I've heard that they're trash fish. I've seen people throw them up on the bank. I've seen people beat their heads in with rocks even because I assume that they're just bad eating. However, if that's truly carp, if that's the carp that you just caught just a couple days ago, I am amazed. <laughs> that, that was a good fish and I could probably eat a whole filet of that easy, no problem. Oh, right on man. But he already ate today. A uh, high five anyway. <laughs> Top notch. Well, I tell you what, if it wasn't for these darn bones here, um, I mean, it would be amazing. I wish, I wish I had a better way of, yeah, of cutting it up and easily frying it just like any other fish and it wouldn't have those bones. Um, and honestly, maybe that's a mission to figure out how to get those bones out of there. I mean, I, I, I feel like I followed it to a T, you know, scoring it, frying it, trying to get those bones uh, dissolved, but it seems like we might have to pressure cook it or something like that to get those bones out of there. Um, but otherwise, I mean, the meat's great. Uh, you heard it from him, you heard it from me. I'm not lying, uh, it, it is good. Uh, and I'll be completely honest with you, those bones, not fun to eat. Um, you know, I was just chewing another piece. It's so good until you get a bone stuck in your teeth or something like that, and then you're like, ah. But yeah, you get a piece that isn't bone, my God, flavor. I mean, there's fat in there, it's good meat, it's, it is really good. Well, how's it going everyone? It's, it's honestly kind of surprising to think that I filmed this back last year and I'm just now getting around to editing it. <laughs> and I mean, you can tell I'm not even wearing the same clothes as I was in the beginning of the video. But uh, I have to say, looking back, you know, I had two fish and I fried one of them and the other one I tried pressure cooking to see if I could get rid of those bones. And, and when I did pressure cook it, it kind of created this like soup, like a fish soup. Um, and it wasn't until I added some lemon juice uh, and I think some vinegar that the bones finally broke down and you could tell you were chewing a bone, but at the same time, it was kind of like a, like pasta if it's still kind of firm, like you're biting through it and everything and it's like, oh yeah, that was a bone, but you don't really notice it because you just crunch through it, I guess, kind of like firm pasta. Um, and it, it wasn't unappealing at all. And if you're looking to make a fish soup, I'd say that's fantastic. And looking at a lot of like, I don't know, uh, Asian recipes and stuff from different parts of the world, that is kind of how they serve it up, like as a soup stewish kind of thing. And, and I can understand why it works. But when you look at kind of American culture and how we like to cook up fish and chips, uh, I guess that's not even American, but you know, that style of frying up fish, it's a real pain that those bones stick around when you fry them. Uh, and maybe I was even thinking back, maybe I scored it the wrong way. I did vertical, uh, you know, up and down along the filet. And maybe if I would have went side to side, if those bones lay differently, um, side to side might have cut them up better in which case maybe when they fried they would dissolve a little bit more or something similar um and i have no idea maybe if you added like lemon to the oil i i honestly don't know what happens when you add something to the oil but i wonder if that acidity in the oil would somehow break down the bones it makes me wonder what would happen maybe it would just freak out and cause a fire i have no idea but i really do think it was something to do with the acidity of the vinegar and the lemon that broke down those bones and i just my mind keeps racing about how i could you know get rid of those bones while frying it but looking back what would i do uh for my next carp i'd, I'd fry it I, I really would i i don't know i just don't eat very many fish soups i guess and when i was eating you know i only ate we only ate like two pieces during the video and then i had a bunch of leftovers which i ate over the rest of the week basically because it was a freaking carp dude there's tons of food i remember that basically i would just warm it up in the microwave and i would break apart the uh, the little pieces and I pull out all the bones and then I would just eat it 
and it was it was great that carp i'm telling you it has fat content in it which you only see in something like a salmon or something like that and salmon have bones too that they pick out it's just a pain that you know the carp bones are these y bones and they're crazy and stuff like that um and the salmon are just little hair bones that you can pick out with tweezers but that's honestly why i think it does taste so good and that's why i think my brother liked it as well it just has that kind of flavor that you don't get with other fish like tilapia or you know some other kind of skinny fish that doesn't really have to deal with very cold climates and whatnot but anyway i might just be making this up if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in any way maybe you want to go catch your own carp and give it a try make sure you hit the like button um subscribe for more videos in the future maybe i will throw some lemon in the oil and we'll see if that works better um but i'm really eager to see down in the comments if you've ever tried this or how you like to prepare it um that would really be of interest to me or if you just disagree with the whole thing and you just think they should all die and be buried in your garden and then you know harvest some tomatoes or something then i guess just let me know down there too <laughs> anyway take care everyone we'll see you in the next video and remember it's always a great day to be a modern day outdoorsman if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content in the future feel free to check out a few of our other videos on the modern day outdoorsman or check out bz hub our outdoor gaming channel with new videos every week